Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are St. Louis. This is St. Louis Cardinals baseball from a rainy Kauffman Stadium in Kansas City. Game number three of the weekend series, the St. Louis Cardinals and the Kansas City Royals. Young guns on the mound today. The Cardinals' Michael Waka looking to improve to 7-0. Hard-throwing right-hander, Jordano Ventura. Absolute stud, and he'll go today for the Kansas City Royals. Welcome to Cardinals baseball. Let's hope the rain stays away. That's Rick Horton. I'm Dan McLaughlin. I mentioned he's a stud. Well, the Cardinals have that, too, in Waka. So this should be a fun matchup. I love this matchup today. You've got two of the youngest starters in all of baseball. Waka's just 23. In fact, the only pitcher who's younger in the National League is his teammate, Carlos Martinez. He has just been the Cardinals' best. Ventura has one of the best fastballs in all of baseball. He's a little bit more energetic than Waka. Speaking of energy, can he do it at the top of the lineup? That's Colton Wong. Cardinals looking to avoid a sweep. The hands of the Royals. Baseball coming up.
long ball. Kendry's Morales in game one. Not once, but twice. Then in game two, just before the rain hit, this hit out of the ballpark, off the bat of Alex Gordon. The Royals looking for a sweep here at Kauffman Stadium. The Cardinals looking to salvage a game. Baseball comes your way next. Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by a reminder from Budweiser designate a driver and enjoy the great times save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs and visit your local mid-america Chevy dealers for great prices on our all-new 2015 vehicles today light rain right before our first pitch And we are at Kauffman Stadium in Kansas City. Yodano Ventura, eight starts. He is three and three, as Rick mentioned in the open. He is a hard thrower. He gets the starting assignment today for Kansas City. We talk about how young Michael Walker is and Carlos Martinez, the youngest two starters in the National League. But Ventura is the sixth youngest starter in the American League. And he has an electric fastball, 96 miles an hour, four-pitch pitcher. But the fastball can be straight at times. But as far as miles per hour are concerned, he can get it up there. So the Hyundai pitch arsenal, you'll see the fastball nearly 70% of the time. And the curve and the cutter and the changeup. So really the same four pitches that Michael Waka throws. But he's not going to use the changeup as much as Waka will to get outs. Interesting to see Mike Matheny having a long conversation with the umpiring crew. Brian Gorman is the crew chief. Ventura is throwing. The umbrellas are out. The rain jackets are on. And we will start this game, uh, game apparently on time. So that's what I'm sure they were talking about. Yeah, and Mike also had a lineup change at the last moment. And uh, he's wanting to make sure he's got that. Uh, really organized correctly because Matt Holiday with the contusion with, he, with getting hit on the arm he's out so uh, Peralta is going to move up to that third spot so Colton Wong will lead it off followed by Carpenter then it was supposed to be Holiday he's out late scratch Peralta in Matt Adams your designated hitter initially in this lineup he's now at first base and you have Molina Gritchick, Reynolds, Borges, and the shortstop is now Pete Cosma batting ninth. 
There's a look at Ned Yost. Led Kansas City to within one win of the World Series a year ago. Dobbs Tired Auto Center's defense. Alex Gordon, four-time gold glover in left. Lorenzo Kane at center. Orlando is in right. Moustakis, Escobar, Infante, and Hosmer along the infield. And Salvador Perez is behind the plate. So Colton Wong will lead it off. He's hitting 310. With five home runs, he's driven in 22. Dan, I don't know who invented whiteout, but I'm glad they did. 112 with our first pitch. A lot of changes in this Cardinals mm. lineup last moment. And the 1-0. This has been a series, and we talked about the home runs hit by Kansas City, but also a series of missed opportunities for the Cardinals. In particular, game two, bases loaded twice, didn't really capitalize. And if they did, they probably win game two, rain short. 69 degrees, rain falling right now here for game number three. And a 3-0 pitch to Colton Wong. Walked him on four straight. Here's Matt Carpenter hitting 323. Seven home runs and 25 RBIs. The home runs have been way up for Carpenter this year. A point of emphasis to drive the ball in spring training. He has done that now in the first two months. And a fastball taken outside. That's five straight to start the game. Balls thrown by Jordano Ventura. Not normally an issue for him. He's not a guy that really has poor control. He does give up the home run ball every once in a while. Six home runs to lead the Royal staff. But he's a guy that's around the plate for the most part. But not a good start for him to this point. One oh pitch. One ball one strike. You think about Matt Carpenter in 2013. He had 11 home runs. Last year, eight and already here in 2015. Off to a terrific start in that department with seven home runs. One ball, one strike on Carpenter. The umpires today, Mark Carlson calling the balls and strikes. Brian Gorman is the crew chief at first. Mike DeMiro is at second. Trip Gibson at third. Wong is leading, not running. Take an eye, three and one. We talked about the pitch velocity, averaging almost 96 miles an hour with the fastball. The curve, that's a hard curve at 83. The cutter, 91. The changeup at 87. This guy is just, I mean, he's going to bring it. Right now having a hard time finding the strike zone. Their catcher, Perez, is one of the American League's best. Not just at throwing, but he's also got a pretty good bat. And I understand really handles the pitchers well. Two consecutive gold gloves for Salvador Perez. And back in safely, Colton Wong. Ned Yost out on the top step to see if they want to challenge this. May have a case. Looked like the throw did beat him to the bag, but was the tag... On Wong. Well, fortunately, Wong went to the outfield side of the bag on that slide. I think he may have avoided that tag, but again, not enough evidence for Ned Yost to challenge it. 3 1 pitch. There we go. Now 3 and 2. So, a question here about whether or not you'll run Colton Wong a full count. You've got a catcher that throws very well behind the plate, but you've got a guy at the plate that you think is going to put the ball in play. Part of the value of Carpenter being a second. Place hitter is that he makes contact. 
I would guess he's running. Three and two, nobody out. Johnny Peralta serving as the designated hitter on deck. The next two, Carpenter. He is running, and the pitch is taken for a ball. Back-to-back -back walks. First two have reached, and it brings in Johnny Peralta. Take one more look at that play at first base. Wong is going to go to the outfield side. Hosmer is holding the runner just in front of the bag. The throw comes in. The tag on the outside part of the bag, but Wong even lower somehow avoids it. Really good on all parts. The throw was perfect. The tag was good, and Wong sliding back. If he doesn't slide that way back to the bag, he's probably out. Johnny Peralta is hitting 333 on the road. That's seventh best in the National League, 296 overall. One back of Carpenter in the home run department with six, and he's driven in 21. First and second. First pitch to Peralta. And that's a ball. A little concern here, I'm sure, for the Royals. Ventura pushed into this start. Initially not scheduled to go today. an interesting point Dan because the pitchers are creatures of habit and the minute you finish your one start whether you get four days three days five days they'll tell you you're Tuesday so Tuesday in your head Tuesday I'm going to run throw work out lift all those things to get ready for Tuesday then it's Monday instead of Tuesday especially young pitchers can get thrown by that. Two and one the count. Didn't seem to bother Edinson Volquez at all here yesterday. He had a good outing. Went six solid innings. I felt the Cardinals left too many men on base clearly and let him off the hook. Those bases loaded situations. Peralta, one of the culprits, had the bases loaded and hit into a double play. Well, always, you credit the pitcher. There's always two sides to that coin. Are you yeah. letting him off the hook or is he getting off the hook by, by making the right pitch at the right time? And often it's a little bit of a Two and two the count. Big gap in left center field. Peralta pulls it foul. Past the slim down. Jose Okendo. He has gotten himself in great shape. Back to running. He looks great. He used to run all the time as a player. That was kind of his normal deal. He'd get to the ballpark at one or two o'clock. A little bit like Matt Carpenter is in today's game and and Jose would run 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 that was his thing the 2 2 so twice on 2 2 pitches foul balls off the bat of Peralta we look forward to getting back home tomorrow. The Cardinals take on the Diamondbacks. Chase Anderson, one and one for Arizona. Carlos Martinez gets that start. He is four and two. Three fifteen, the first pitch tomorrow. Little check swing and a base hit into center field. Long will score. Carpenter on his way to third. And excuse me, RBI single for Johnny Peralta. Well, there really isn't much to the skill of this. This is really about just good fortune off the bat of Johnny Peralta. For all those times you line a ball right at somebody, there are times where you get this. Check swing. And he's got to hit it hard enough to get up the middle so he just happened to catch it on the good part of the bat and thought maybe Escobar would have a play on it but it got through the hole in a hurry Adams to center field Kane is back he won't get it one hops off the wall Carpenter can walk home they'll hold up Peralta at third and a double for Adams two to nothing St. Louis here in the first
So you go from an excuse me hit to a get out of my way hit. Matt Adams crushed that ball. First pitch, jumping on the fastball down in the zone from Ventura. And this ball is crushed over the head of Kane. Very good defensive outfield here, but that got over his head very, very quickly. This will be an interesting at bat for Yadier Molina. He was not at the on deck circle for the at bat for Adams. Nobody was on deck. And remember the late scratch by Holiday, the mix up in the lineup, and you wonder if Yadi's even ready to go. Good question. Infield is drawn in. Runners at second and third, and nobody out. Well, that scratch, that late change happened while he was warming up Michael Walker. So he comes in from the bullpen, and, you know, maybe you just assume everybody knows. Maybe he didn't get that word. One ball, one strike. But if anybody can fall out of bed and hit, it's Yadier Molina. He just kind of knows how to get the two strike approach, the kind of put the ball in play approach. Certainly an RBI opportunity for him and the Cardinals to build a nice lead for Waka. In the dirt and Perez now has Peralta hung up between third and the home plate. He's tagged out in a costly mistake by St. Louis. This is just a base running mistake by Johnny Peralta. You have to be sure you're going to score with nobody out, especially. Ball gets by the catcher, but really just by his feet, so he's able to pick it up. And there's the jump that Peralta tries to get a little bit too late. Now he's hung out the drop. You know, if there's two outs, maybe you're a little more aggressive, but but not with nobody out. It can't happen. Second and third. Nope. So two and one the count now on Yadier Molina. One out and a runner at second base. That's Adams. And that kind of play changes potentially the complexion of this inning. Yes, you've scored two. However, second and third, nobody out. You would think you would score at least one more. Well, it breathes some life into the pitcher, too. The Turin now thinking, hey, I can get out of this with two runs and maybe still win this game. You know, sometimes something good happens on the field and it settles you, which would be the exact opposite of what Peralta did where he got to hit the center. Wow, that's frustrating. That was a good pitch. How did he do that? Now you start spinning negatively. And perhaps now he's back spinning in the right direction. The 2-2 popped up behind home plate and into the seats. Fans still filing into Kauffman Stadium. I'm sure some have stayed away because of the rain. Not sure as to whether or not we would get this game started on time. We have. Rain is in the area. Rain in the forecast. The 2-2 again. Molina hits it to third. Moustakis. Two down. In steps Randall Grichik with two outs and a runner at second base. You think about why Holiday scratch from this lineup. You think about two hit by pitches, games one and two back to back. Yeah, the official word is because of his contusion on his arm, he's not in the lineup. Sure, he took some swings and it, at first felt okay, but then maybe. Wasn't a hundred percent sure and I'm sure the trainers had some input on this as well. And you, you consider the weather situation going on here in Kansas City and maybe that added to it. One ball one strike on Randall Gritchick. This road trip has provided some ups and downs more ups than downs for Randall Gritchick. One night, the five strikeouts. The next night, back in there. A couple of extra base hits. The day after that, he had three extra base hits. The 2 1 pitch. Yeah, 
This will be pitch number 30 of the inning. Richick pops it up. Escobar is there. The Cardinals strand Adams, but they pick up two. Matt Adams at first base today smokes a double to center. RBI number 19. Cardinals on top. at 28 and 14 they have opened up a three game lead in the American League Central Escobar Moustakis and Kane then Hosmer Morales who's had a nice series Gordon Perez Infante and Orlando Alcides Escobar we've seen him show off the glove and he's now hitting 281 with one home run and 15 RBIs Michael Walker trying to improve to 7 and 0 today. And he's gotten a lot of run support the last couple of outings, especially against the Mets in New York, where he had a very solid outing. Went seven innings in that game, but got 10 runs of support. And he's really been a guy that's drawn a lot of tough starting pitchers on the other side. Amazing to have this kind of start. And he's had Johnny Cueto a couple of times, Max Scherzer. Today he gets Ventura. I think the best summary that you can give the Kansas City Royals team right now is that they were a team a year ago that thought they might be good. Now they know they're good. The 1 1 lifted in the air to center field and it drops. A base hit in front of Peter Borges and Escobar is aboard. Michael Waka getting the start today, and we take a look at the Hyundai pitch arsenal. Four pitch pitcher, as is Ventura. The fastball, he's going to throw about 56% of the time. Cutter, changeup, and a curveball. He's worked, of course, on the curveball and cutter, but the changeup to me still one of his best pitches. When he can get that ball down in the zone, he'll get outs with it, swings and misses with it. Mike Moustakis took a ground ball. Off the clavicle and had to leave the game yesterday and he's back in there for game number two and that pitch is popped up Carpenter calling for it and has it for the out one away 12 percent with the changeup. does that surprise you uh, well I think there it should be even more I think if he's facing a lot of left handed batters that's what I mean more. and I think that that'd be interesting to watch that here this afternoon for for fans that kind of want to see how do you attack a hitter how a right handed pitcher who has both a good curveball and a changeup, how he'll use those pitches. Against lefties, look for a fastball changeup. Against right handers, look for fastball curveball cutter. Lorenzo Kane hit 301 last year, five home runs, 53 RBIs, and he's at 305 this season. Really turned into a nice player.
amazing story with Kane is the fact that he did not play organized baseball until his sophomore year of high school. He loved basketball, had never played even Little League. Hmm. And they knew at his high school he was an athlete, and his mother bought him a glove and said, you've got to do something. You're not sitting around here. So a friend <laughs> took him, and that's how he started playing baseball. That's pretty similar to George Hendricks' story, the, the one-time Cardinal and just terrific coach at the big league level and part of that 82 Cardinal championship team. He went to a tryout wearing jeans and a T-shirt when he was 18 years old because somebody said, I think this guy can hit, and he sure could. Could throw a little, too. And he, too, is a basketball player, but you know, it, it, I think that's probably some welcome news to some moms and dads out there that are thinking that their son has to start at age two or he'll never make it. And it really is not true. Talking with Buck Showalter in spring training, he said when he sees a young player come up, he likes to look at the bio on the player to make sure that he's played other sports. Does not want that individual dedicated to the sport growing up for 12 months. In the air, left center, Borges with his speed is there. And he makes the play. The Cardinals defensively presented by Dobbs Tired Auto Centers. Mike Reynolds in left. Peter Borges in center. Randall Gritchick is in right. Carpenter, Cosma, Wong, and Adams along the infield. And Yadier Molina is behind the plate. Eric Hosmer, seven home runs. He's driven in 30. The shift there and slipping on the outfield grass, Wong, and gets Hosmer from his knees. Good defense by St. Louis in the bottom of the first. Two to nothing as we turn to our Toyota keys to the game. Well, I think key number one on a day like this is to not get too involved with what the weatherman has to say. As a player, you have to realize you're playing the Royals, not the weather, and it's nine out of ten people here at the ballpark are asking about the skies and what's coming and what's not, and you've got to focus on competing. That's number one. Michael Walker as the Cardinals stopper. Mike Shannon used that phrase in our pregame show. Stopper in a rotation is a guy who changes momentum for a team and the Cardinals losing three straight relying on Waka to be that guy here this afternoon. Mark Reynolds 1-0 pitch chopped foul one ball one strike what a year it was a season ago for Jordano Ventura signed as a non-drafted free agent back in 2008 and he put together one of the best rookie seasons 
by a pitcher in Royals history. Went 14 and 10. And those 14 wins tied Rich Gale back in 1978 for fourth all time among Royals rookies. The most since Tom Gordon set the Kansas City record of 17 back in 1989. First strikeout, one down. Again, I mentioned this is a team that knows they're good now, and what's come along with that is a little bit of swagger on this Royals team, and I, I think that's a good thing. Yeah, you're coming to the ballpark expecting to win. Probably their lead guy in swagger is their pitcher today for Ned Yost, Ventura. He's a guy that is a little, I use the word energetic in our open. He's, I guess that can... Rubs some the wrong way. Very emotional the way he pitches. They've been involved in a couple of brawls already this year because of him. But very different than Waka that way in terms of temperament. But both extremely, extremely impressive young talents. He fielded a comeback from the White Sox, Adam Eaton. This was back on April 23rd. There's a strike. That started a bench-clearing brawl as he yelled at him running down the line. Hit Brett Laurie back on April 18th. That started a brawl. And that was with Oakland. And that will carry over, if you're wondering, to the next time these two teams meet. Yeah, I think With so. Kansas City and Oakland. That got nasty. On a hop. Nice play. Infante. The stretch by Hosmer to get Peter Borges. Two down. With two outs, it brings in Pete Cosma. Peter Borges always hustling down the line. I mentioned in game one of this series that Randall Grichik's one of the most exciting players the Cardinals have right now. But I think you put Borges in that mix. And I don't mean, again, best players, but there's just something about the way they play. They play hard. They're good defensive players. And I just really like the way they're going first to third more often this year. I'm seeing that in baseball overall, Dan. But the Cardinals are certainly doing that better. I think it's out of necessity with the lack of power. You've got to find ways to generate offense, take the extra base. It's a good point. It's being preached. The strike to Cosma, nothing at two. Can't wait around for the home run like he used to. Yeah. Ventura made four postseason starts, five overall appearances last year, including two World Series starts. He had 25 and a third innings pitched in the postseason. That topped all the uh, hurlers for Kansas City. The check swing and a strikeout of Cosmo. So two in the inning, midway through two, and a two-run lead for St. Louis.
And let's check in with Pat Paris. Well, Dan, as you and Rick were talking about, no Matt Holiday in the lineup today. He was expected to start in left field, but because of that forearm contusion, remember he took the pitch on the game broadcast nationally on Fox last night, took the pitch off the forearm, hit by pitch, takes his base 40th consecutive game for him to uh, reach base safely, but then the game was called and the uh, swelling was too much. They uh, put a wrap on it and apparently uh, overnight came back this morning and he was uh, unable to go today. Hopefully we'll uh, get more information and pass it along to you. I'd like to see him back in the lineup tomorrow, obviously. Morales taps it foul, so Hayward it's still uh, dealing with that hip injury, though, there, Pat? Yeah, and it, that began Friday night in the game here against the Royals. Uh, began to feel a little tightness in his hip. Uh, Mike Matheny decided to give him last night's game off as a precaution. Then he checked the forecast today and saw the rain in the forecast and thought better of having Jason Hayward in the lineup again. So he gets a second straight day off, but expect him as well, if no further setbacks, to be up in the lineup tomorrow. All right, thank you, Pat. Two balls, one strike. Kendry's Morales, the switch hitter. We had two home runs on Friday night. Chops that foul. The Royals getting good production from their designated hitter. Who last year split time with Minnesota and Seattle. 39 games with Minnesota, hit 234. 59 with Seattle, hit 207. And you were talking about a, a team that knows how to win. What also, I think, is a difference with this team, unquestionably, is Moustakis, Morales, and Hosmer all off to very good starts offensively. Yeah, and Morales has the best start. He is first in the National League in doubles, RBIs, and second in runs scored. So he's right in the middle of all of it. Three and two the count. Ventura has settled in in the second inning at 30 in the first. In terms of pitches, Michael Waka, a 10-pitch first inning. Morales draws the leadoff walk. Gordon with the big home run in game two of this series. Now with five this year, hitting 271 with 23 driven in. This guy has made himself into a terrific outfielder, an all-around player. Was in the MVP conversation last year till about midway through August, then September tailed off. But four gold gloves as he was drafted second overall in 2007 as a third baseman. And those four gold gloves, one platinum, have been won as a left fielder. One ball, one strike. Memorial Day tomorrow, always a good time to take a look at some of the trends in baseball. You know, you're a couple of months in. The biggest surprises and disappointments. And Waka, Long way to go, but he'd be in your conversation for the all-star team and maybe even the, the starter for that game. A chance to go to 7-0 and today. He's got the perfect start, that's for sure. He's gotten run support, but he hasn't really needed it in many of his starts. The ERA, extremely low. 2.13. And much more like the Waka that we saw a couple years ago. See Adams behind Morales with the lefty up. He's on the line, and that's waved at and struck out. BJC Healthcare, difference maker. Michael Walkup, what he has done on the road with Cueto, Scherzer, Liriano, and today he gets Ventura. He's been up to the task. Salvador Perez is grounded into eight double plays this year, most on the Royals club. 
it's interesting to see how Adams is trying to keep Morales close at the bag. He's actually playing behind him and not holding him on the traditional way you'll see first baseman hold on a runner. But you're letting him know you're there. And then you back off to try to give yourself a little more range. And the, the assumption would be Mustakas, who's stolen just one base, won't run on Yachty. But you have to. You have to at least keep him close. That's actually Morales, the runner there, who's not going to. Not going to take off. He has not stolen any bases and won't. Double play ball. Long. The turn and a pick by Adams. How about that double play? 6 4 3. Bubble by Cosma. The flip to Wong. Barehanded. He spun and throws a strike to Adams with a little pick and help. Nicely done. Cardinals baseball presented by Steel Outdoor Power Equipment. SteelDealers.com. Visit STIHL. And by Ford, the official cars and trucks of the St. Louis Cardinals. Colton Long, Matt Carpenter, Johnny Peralta. The Cardinals leading two to nothing on a rainy afternoon here in Kansas City. Wong drives that out to right. Orlando is there. I think the question on that double play would be, was Perez hustling out of the batter's box after it was bobbled at second base and then Wong barehanded the relay from Cosmo? Well, he thinks he's out. He looked away. And I wouldn't call that running as fast as you can. I think that double play a little bit of an odd one turned by Pete Cosma not the way you draw it up. But they got it done. And a strike to Matt Carpenter walked and scored back in the first. We said it at the time he wondered the base running mistake by Peralta would it come back to cost the Cardinals and since that time and you mentioned it it gives a pitcher a little life. Well, he's had that life, and he feels like he's back in the game and pitching like the guy that we expected going into play today. Yeah, that ball hit well by Colton Wong, but six straight retired since then. He's got his fastball up in the zone. He's trying to get the Cardinals to chase up. We saw that in New York from Jacob deGrom. He was pitching up in the zone, and the Cardinals couldn't catch up to it. And Ventura clearly likes to pitch up in the zone as well. Strike out of Carpenter. He knew it. Third strikeout for Ventura. Big Cardinal fans, Caden and Gage, watching today on Fox Sports Midwest. And big, big Mac Carpenter fans.
Here's Peralta. A check swing RBI single that scored Colton Long into center field back in the first inning. So you'd have to say even those two runs in a way were a gift to the Cardinals because of the leadoff walks and then the kind of the check swing hit by Peralta but the gift could have been bigger. That situation you're hoping at least for one, uh, one more run attack on the two that had already scored. Well, Dan, you say at least one because think about it. it that one out that ended up being the pickoff. Had that been a productive out? Let's just say a ground ball to second base. Not only do you get the third run, but you get the runner from second to third. So now you've got again an RBI situation for your next batter. And, and really, you hope to get two runs in that situation, not just one. And they ended up with no extras. Mustakis. And all of a sudden, Ventura is locked in. Eight straight after the double by Adams. MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball, in-game highlights, live look-ins, replay reviews, radio broadcast, stat cast, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. The bottom of the third rolls in. Michael Waka back to work. Omar Infante at the plate. Ground ball to short, backhanded by Cosma. One down. Big Cardinal fan is Jean Kenny. And she's at St. Anthony's celebrating her 94th birthday. Never misses a game. So happy birthday to Jean Kenny. We hope for a speedy recovery. See you down at the ballpark very soon. And also make sure you say hello to our friend Ed Schaefer. And a strike to Paulo Orlando. Orlando is hitting 266. We've got Alex Rios set to come back fairly soon, so Orlando's time in right field could be limited. Done a nice job. 29 years old, late bloomer, longtime minor leaguer. You mentioned from Brazil. Getting a chance to play, and he's holding his own. Five triples, 266 batting out. Really good speed. And a decent outfielder. 
they actually have an outstanding outfield. They're a good defensive team everywhere here at Kansas City. The bar has certainly been raised in terms of expectations of winning here, playing good baseball, doing things right. Many publications going into this season had Detroit, Cleveland, the White Sox, when they do their predictions, ahead of Kansas City. And here's Kansas City now leading that division by three games. The 2 2. Held on to by Molina and strikeout number two for Michael Walkup. Saturday, June 13th, walk home with a Cardinals pet leash. Compliments of Nestle Perina. They're available to 25,000 pet lovers ages 16 and older. Get your tickets at cardinals.com slash promotions. Alcides Escobar, single to center field. That's the lone hit that Michael Walker has given up today. Certainly a family day here at the ballpark, and we know with Memorial Day weekend, a lot of families get together and watch Cardinal baseball, and we hope the weekend is a good one and a meaningful one as we celebrate and honor those who've served our country and really is a nice crowd here on this Sunday despite the weather. Spoke with Derek Lilliquist today about his son, who is a Marine and is expected to go out his second tour of duty through Iraq. So proud of his son. He said, came to him at the end of high school and said, Dad, I'm going to join the Marines. And he said, well, let's give it about a week. Let's think about this. And he said it's been the best decision of his life. Very, very proud of him. One ball and two strikes with two outs and nobody on for Escobar. It's going to be good to get home. I mean, these guys have been on the road 13 of the last 16 games, and you don't want to make excuses. The road is part of the job. I mean, you got to be able to at least stay 500, if not above 500, if you're a championship team on the road. But it'll be good to get back home where the Cardinals have really played well. 15 and 5 at home, and, you know, that last home stand almost didn't even seem like a home stand. Three days, and so players barely had time enough to, to pack and, and repack and go up on the road again. And it's and it's fun to play in front of your 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 home crowd too to get kind of that excitement back about the fact that this is a really this is a great start for the Cardinals this year. You're in first place, you go on a road trip, you lose some games in New York, you drop two here in Kansas City, you can start to feel as if, well maybe we're not playing very well. And I think the perspective can come back again once you get home. Starts with Arizona tomorrow afternoon. The 2-2. Ground ball hit to short. There's Cosma to his left. And Michael Waka is sharp through three innings. The Cardinals on top as we head to the fourth. Two to nothing.
nothing in the top of the fourth. T-Mobile game changer. The Cardinals with a record of 27 and 16, and their run differential plus 50. Royals plus 70. Then the Dodgers, Cardinals, also in the top five. A strike to Adams. Matt with a double over the head of Lorenzo Kane in center field. First pitch was a strike, and now they put the shift on. And the Royals doing what a lot of teams will do. They assume that Matt Adams may bunt with one strike or with, with, with no strikes, but not with one strike. So a lot of teams are, are have figured him out to be a guy that, boy, you give him that, that first shot over there and he'll go ahead and bunt. But once he gets a strike, they put the shift on and talk to Jose Okendo about that for quite some time. Here's the first pitch. So that's where you're playing. You take away the bunt. Now it's strike one. And Mustaka moves to the right side of second base because you just don't believe he's going to try it when he's down in the count. The 2 2 to Matt Adams. Hits right into the shift. There's Mustakas. And he makes the play. I think the point is that defenses believe a hitter won't let himself get down 0 and 2 in account by trying to get a bunt down with one strike, but he might try one time because you really negate the power. Once you get the two strikes on a batter, you're going to have to shorten up your swing anyway. And a lot of teams are defending using the shift in that way. And a strike to Yadier Molina. Rain is picked up. Here at the ballpark. Oh, one pitch. Almost hit Molina's. He drops the bat. Thank goodness it didn't catch his hand. Well, we have a moment. Special birthday for Gary LaRock's mom. Now, Gary is the director of player development. And he's in his 40th year in professional baseball and player development and scouting. His mom celebrating her 94th birthday, never misses a game, so I'm sure she's very proud of her son. And happy birthday, Mrs. LaRock. I've got to say about Gary, I just really think he's a tremendous baseball man. And when there's talk in the offseason about players moving and Cardinals losing some players, signing some people, I was very concerned about him being lost because I think he's a big part of that Cardinals development that's going on. It's 10 straight set down by Ventura. This one's for you. Returns Friday. Al Rabosky, Pat Paris will join thousands of new Army recruits and Cardinal fans at Fort Leonard Wood. The public is invited to Nutter Fieldhouse to watch the Cardinals game and the postgame show. Join us for this one's for you. That's Friday at Fort Leonard Wood. Also a reminder tomorrow, the pregame show begins at 2 o'clock for a 315 first pitch. We expanded the uh, pregame to an hour, and you'll see an extended interview with Mitch Harris. The 1 1. Two one pitch fouled back. So since that play by Peralta with runners at second and third nobody out. Ten batters faced 35 pitches no hits no runs no walks. The 2 2 to Randall Grichik. Very much a steady rain here at the ballpark. And a strikeout, the breaking ball. Number five. That's 11 in a row.
Fall on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by Steel Outdoor Power Equipment. Find a servicing steel dealer at steeldealers.com or search S-T-I-H-L. And by Ford, the official cars and trucks of the St. Louis Cardinals. Along with Pat Paris and Rick Horton, I'm Dan McLaughlin. Great to have you along here on Fox Sports Midwest. Mike Moustakis, Lorenzo Cain, Eric Cosmer here in the home half of the fourth. Rain not much of a factor yet, though it's a steady light rain right now. But just to kind of clarify for fans that may be wondering, the team that's trailing needs to hit in the fifth inning for it to become an official game. So we're getting closer to that. And so there are times where you'll, you'll see the pitcher working on the team that's ahead working just a little bit quicker. There's a base hit out to left for Moustakis. There's a leadoff hit in the first. A leadoff walk in the second. A one, two, three, third. And now a leadoff hit here in the fourth. Dawkins takes that pitch away perfectly. We haven't really seen the field and the wet conditions come into play yet, except maybe for the play that Colton Wong made in the early going, where he slipped and fell. But even as Reynolds threw that ball in, you could tell he was being careful about the ball, and it was probably a little bit wet when he picked it up and threw it. So that's, that's an issue for outfielders trying to get that perfect grip on a baseball and throwing it, I would say, if you're a base runner, you might want to take a couple extra bases in this game. He's also very careful in how he ran to the ball, too. Very yeah. Gingerly. Getting to that baseball. Center field. And going back and making the catch is Peter Borges. Ball carried on him a bit. As Kane hit a rope for out number one. You can see Borges check his footing as well. After making this play in center field, it's hit hard to center and kind of comes back a little bit, tails towards Borges, but there's the footing problem. And it's a good thing he didn't have the footing problem when he reached up to try to catch the baseball. Otherwise, that's a triple. Or worse. Eric Hosmer grounded out to second. That was the play that Wong slipped on from the outfield grass with the runner at first. Wong is in on the dirt. I'm not sure it's fair to say anymore the breaking ball is an improving pitch for Michael Walker. It's just a good pitch. Yeah. He's developed that along the way. And you know about the fastball, which the other day was hitting 95 to 97 in New York. We talked in the onset, the changeup is often the pitch you use to left-handers. And the reason we're saying that, Danny, is that changeup will go away from a left-handed batter. Breaking pitch comes towards them. And if you can get the off-speed pitch to be moving away, that's helpful. Double play ball, 4-6, 3 on the double play. The second turn by that combination up the middle today. We head to the fifth, 2-0.
Jim Hungo thanks. 2 0 Cardinals, top of five rolls in. Here's Mark Reynolds. 11 straight set down by Ventura after a rough start. Walked the first two he saw in this game, then back to back hits. And since that time, 11 straight. I've been impressed with his breaking ball. I've heard about his fastball and certainly know what that is and, and seen it, but the curveball has been kind of a knee buckler. Reynolds out in front. Hits it sharply to Mustakis. The stretch by Hosmer. And it's out number one. Friday, June 12th, the Budweiser, Anheuser, Bush, Stein. 25,000 fans, ages 21 and older. Take home the fifth Stein in the championship series, which highlights the 30th anniversary of Ricky Horton's 1985 Nationally Championship Club. Tickets at cardinals.com slash promotions. Peter Borges grounded out to second. Files it back for strike one. My club, huh? Your club. Mine by, by the White Rat. Yeah, mine by association. And what a tremendous year that was for baseball in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Just reminded that Kansas City was down three games to one to Toronto in the ALCS that year. Chop towards third. Moustakis playing in, makes the play. So two down, and it brings in Cosmo. Well, we talked about how good Kansas City plays defense. There's Moustakis on the backhand. Got a very good arm, and Osmer's as good as they come at first base. This really is it's really a defense you just don't expect to make mistakes. If you're a pitcher in Kansas City right now, you've got to just love your job because you're going to get all kinds of help. You're not just going to get kind of the good plays. You're going to get some spectacular plays behind you. Denny Matthews was talking before the game about the 77 Royals. They often talk about being one of the best defensive Royals teams ever. And he, in his mind, this team's better because they make all the plays they made in 77, but they'll make some more spectacular plays. Here's an 0-1 pitch. Makes you wonder how that team was built with the turf as opposed to a grass a field that you have now here at Kauffman Stadium. And the same can be said for the Cardinals of 1985. It's good to be a pitcher on that team, too. 100% right. <laughs> <laughs> you would know. Well, when Whitey was looking for pitchers and, and scouting for them and trading for them and signing free agents, you know, the ability to throw strikes was question number one. And because he figured if you threw strikes, something good was going to happen. You're in a big ballpark that very few people could hit the ball out to center field or the other way. Very few. And you had great defensive players everywhere. Two and two the count on Cosma. There's Pedro, Mar or rather Carlos Martinez, little Pedro. And uh, Carlos will get the call tomorrow. Our Budweiser, what's on tap? Anderson going for the Diamondbacks. We'll come your way again. Note the start time, 2 o'clock, hour long pregame. Little Pedro. Easy to call Pedro. I've done that many times. In fact, every place we go, that's a common thing that we hear from our broadcasters in the other booth they'll say boy it kind of reminds me of Pedro in a lot of ways with his pitch assortment nice vote. compliment vote for Pedro <laughs> that was dynamite dude. <laughs> three and two on Cosma where's this Four millimeters outside. Shallow right. Orlando under it. Puts it away. Cosma is 0 for 2. 14 straight for Ventura.
on St. Louis lead as Michael Walker has been sensational so far. And we flash back to his major league debut against the Kansas City Royals. And we saw that outstanding changeup that night. Seven innings, two hits, one run. Took a no decision back in 2013. And a game that ended up around three in the morning. A lot of rain featured in that game. It's almost two years ago to the day when Waka had that debut and he was just terrific that night. And really his first first year in the big leagues, you could not have asked for more for a guy just 21 years of age. Here's a 1-0 pitch. Jeff Rancor. A home run off of Mitchell Boggs that sent us into extra innings. And then the rain hit. And Joe West and his crew had a day game that afternoon at Wrigley. So they finished up the game around 3 a.m. or so and then took a four to five hour trip to Chicago. Little shut eye and they were ready to go. I'm, I'm remembering that game better now because I did the post game. Oh. That morning. And we literally closed down the bar in the casino at Lumiere where we were doing the post game. The manager came to us and said, Hey, just put up the chairs when you're done. We're leaving. <laughs> a check swing and a strike. Three and two on Morales. We'll check in with Pat Paris after this next pitch from Michael Walker. Yeah. I'm assuming Pat was your partner Pat, that night. Pat and I were together. We were taking turns, taking naps, and literally the only people there. Down the right field line, and it's hooking foul. Walker got away with that pitch that was up. So, Pat Parrish, you, re you recall this late night with Rick Horton? I, I recall that Rick Horton found a leather couch there at the sports bar at Lumiere Place and propped his head up on one end so he could see a monitor just to make sure, you know, the game hadn't restarted. And that we didn't see him for a while. That's all I remember. Always working hard. That <laughs> Sorry, Rick. Ricky, I got to call you out. No, that, I didn't lay down that entire time. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I thought we took turns, but I, I'm thinking I took a long turn. I think, you're I, think right. I just laid my head on the desk is what I did. I believe we were done after 4, 430 perhaps with the post Yeah, game. about 418. And, I'll never forget. And, and, Pat, as I recall, it was a riveting post game. Oh, show. you know, you know what we say, Ricky, get all the sponsored elements in and get out. Yeah, there were three people watching. You, Pat, and <laughs> well, Pat's mom's a big fan. Of yes, the show. she is. Okay. Here's a 3-2 pitch again. Good battle here. Hit the other way. And the catch is made by Mark Reynolds. A reminder that the 1985 National League Championship ring is given away tomorrow. Presented by Amherst, Missouri. 25,000 fans, ages 16 and over. Entering with a ticket. Get that wearable replica ring. That's tomorrow. Still some seats available for Memorial Day. So come on down to the ballpark. And get that ring and get there early. Alex Gordon struck out first time up. You know, two players strike me from that game in 2013 that have had just incredible falls in their career. One being Mitchell Mitchell Boggs. And, you know, he started that year closing games out. And the other one is Alan Craig, right? Well, Craig's is historic, the drop-off. Agreed. And hard to understand, really. I think Mitchell Boggs, we, we kind of saw it coming a little bit with Mitchell Boggs. I, I think the, the key phrase I used to use all the time with Mitchell Boggs is he would throw a Hall of Fame sinker and follow it with a double-A slider. And, and he just, he, the consistency for Mitchell wasn't there, but he had such a tremendous arm when he was right and just just painful to watch him kind of loses command and and then back to the minor leagues and I believe out of baseball into center Borges misplayed it time run will come to the plate that may be the first outfield error for the Cardinals all season long I'm not sure if this was knuckling or not, but certainly a catch for ball by Borges and just didn't get it. The 
ball hit by Kane back in the fourth, he did not look comfortable on that play either. Agreed. So it's an error on Borges, and now it's Perez. Wouldn't you know it, base hit. Royals get on the board. We've been touting the Kansas City Royals defense and explaining that when you play well defensively, you help your team win games by saving runs. This is the opposite of that. When you make an error and you allow a team back in a game, errors can kill you. A little bit of a jam shot by Perez, but it got the job done. Omar Infante with one out. Cardinals have turned two double plays today. Infante is 0 for 1 with a ground out to short. With Perez running at first base, Adams playing behind. Breaking ball and pulled foul. O2 pitch. Strikeout number three for Michael Walker. A look at Arkea in the driver's seat. This 2 1 game. Fewest runs per game. But this is allowed. The Cardinals lead that list. The Dodgers, Kansas City, Tampa Bay, and you're talking about teams that are all in contention. And you get on that list when you've got a good starting staff, but when you have a good bullpen to go along with it and both these teams have terrific bullpens at least in the early going Kansas City shut down seven eight and ninth Cardinal starters I do believe are better than Kansas City's overall but it's a pretty good matchup today with Ventura and Waka Here's a 1 0. Jammed him. Popped up. Who wants it? Adams as Wong gets out of the way. The air leads to a run. We played five, and it's a 2 1 St. Louis lead. have the lead 
Some of the big moments over the years. What about Albert Pujols? He used to love coming to this ballpark. Ryan Ludwig back in 2007 with a walk-off. After Billy Butler had homered in the ninth to tie it, Betancourt put the Royals ahead back in 2012. Oh, that's just a kind of shot that just warms up the heart. Royals and Cardinal fans coming together as one. Touching, really is. Here's Colton Wong, who has walked and scored and also lined out to right. Mentioned Waka could be an all star this year. I think we're looking at one right here in Colton Wong. Matt Holiday could be on that list. One and two. But 14 straight for Giordano Ventura after a rough start to this game. And Wong lines it to right again and it drops in for a hit. The ball hit right at Orlando. Came in a step or two, then stopped. And a sinking liner. And that's a break the Cardinals needed, maybe. Well, he lined out to Orlando the last time up. This one a little bit more of a sinking liner. And I just wonder about the slow footing, maybe, in right field for Orlando kept him from coming in and making that play. Now you have Matt Carpenter. Walked and scored in the first. Called out on strikes back in the third. Ventura has struck out five. Wong is running, and I like to see that. They hit and run. Get something going. Especially against a guy that's been shutting down the Cardinals since the first inning. And this is the good combination for it. It's exactly really what we were talking about a year ago when Carpenter was leading off and Wong hitting second. We really were talking about it maybe being backwards because you've got Carpenter, the guy that's going to make more contact hit the ball on the ground more of kind of a spray hitter Wong runs better so it just seems like it makes sense for Wong to be in front of Carpenter and I know the the on base percentage really won out a year ago because Carpenter's was so phenomenal but I don't mind having an on base percentage guy in that second spot either plus he can do some damage. Oh, one pitch blocked by Perez. What a play. Likes to throw, too, doesn't he? When you do that, you have to be fearless. And I remember when Tony La Russa would talk about Yadier Molina and Albert Pujols as defensive players. He said, you, you want to know what separates them? They are fearless. They are not afraid to make a mistake with their aggressive play. Like Michael Jordan wanting that last shot. You're not going to win every time, but I want that shot. You see Molina throwing down to second to third late in the game and a tie score. You'd see Pujols rushing that ball over to third base on a bunt attempt and not being afraid to get the lead runner on a very close play. And again, that's part of that fearless style that I think is a great way to be. That's hammered down the right field line, and that ball is gone. Fair ball, two run homer for Carpenter, his eighth this year. Kendrys Morales just missed hitting a ball exactly like this down the right field line in the fifth. But Carpenter is able to keep that ball fair, and that's a huge hit in this game. Think about the way 
Ventura had settled down getting closer to their bullpen. He was really in shutdown mode. One ball one strike on Johnny Peralta. He has an RBI back at the first Carpenter now with eight home runs. Two more runs scored today. And Matt Carpenter is driven in 27. Seven home runs allowed now by Ventura to lead the team. So there's a guy with great stuff but occasionally leaves him in the middle of the plate. Peralta to Moustakis. He's been busy today. First out here in the top of the sixth. So Carpenter a big blow here in the sixth inning right from the grip. Off speed pitch. It just stays on the inner half. Meant to be away. What do you think a change up? Looked like a change up grip but it looked like it was too hard for a change up. And if it is a change up it's supposed to be down and away. Adams has doubled to center picked up an RBI. And then hit into the ship. So just like we saw in the previous at bat Moustakis after strike one the third baseman goes to. The second base side of the bag. One out nobody on and a one one pitch to Adams. Cardinals return home tomorrow where they are 15 and 5. They are 12 and 11 on the road. The strikeout of Adams. Six today for the right hander. But you really start to break down where the Cardinals make hey, it's inside their own division. Ten games above 500 against the National League Central. They're 17 and 7. Vision is going to be fun. It's going to be fun throughout the course of the season. And you know, will the Cubs continue to play good baseball? They're six games over 500. They've won seven of their last ten. They've only played about 500 baseball in the division, and that's the difference between being in second place and first place right now for Chicago. Molina on the first pitch pops it up. Perez in foul territory makes the catch. Matt Carpenter. He could be a third time all star. He's well on his way. Eighth home run, RBIs 26 and 27. 4 1, St. Louis. Go Matt Carpenter with a two run homer and it's now a 4 1 St. Louis lead Fox Sports Midwest is joining with Cardinals care to benefit 
Reviving baseball in the inner cities? You can help, too, by golfing in the Ted Savage RBI Golf Classic on June 9th. Cardinals alumni join with golfers on the course, and foursomes are available, but going quickly. Find the details at cardinals.com slash RBI golf. Michael Walker will pitch to the top of the lineup here in the bottom of the sixth. Alcides Escobar, Mike Moustakis, and Lorenzo Kane. Three hits allowed by Michael into center. There's Borges. One away. I think important to note too that the Cardinals bullpen is much more rested than they were about a week ago and we really haven't seen Rosenthal in quite some time or Seegers so you've got the two guys that you expect to be eighth and ninth inning type guys if Derek Lilliquist and Mike Matheny believe that Walker needs some help so far he's just kind of working very efficiently against this very good Royals lineup lead the American League in hitting at 289. Mentioned that Waka made his debut in 2013 and what a year that was for him as Moustakis looks at strike two. He was an all-star in the Pacific Coast League in 2013. In that game retired all five that he saw in relief. Got the top star award but things were just starting for Michael Waka. MVP of the NLCS beating Clayton Kershaw twice. 13 and two thirds scoreless innings. You talk about bursting on the scene. Did he do that? Mustakis waves at it. It strikes out four today for Michael Walker. Just 72 pitches working here in the sixth inning. Ball tailing away, 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 and Moustakis couldn't hold up. You know, on this Royals side, I think a lot of credit should go to Dale Swain, and he's been getting a lot of credit as the hitting coach for the Royals, and it's not to kind of be negative about the coach before him, but, but when he took over, there were some good hitters on this team that were underperforming, and, and he kind of changed things around a bit here, and they're back to being an outstanding offense. Under the glove of Cosma and Lorenzo Kane is aboard. There's Dale Swain, the former manager with the Chicago Cubs. Played with Dale years ago, and I believe he and Matheny may have been teammates with the Brewers organization. He played a long time in the big leagues. He's their hitting coach again, and, and really since he took over, he wanted to get them back driving the ball again and, and thinking about power. They were becoming too much of kind of a singles hitting team, just kind of a contact team and felt like they needed to swing harder drive the ball that's part of it what he brought to this to this offense and it's worked in the dirt kept in front by Molina Eric Cosmer at the plate is hit into a double play and also routed to second I mean, Moustakis this time last year was hitting 152 an option to Omaha now he's one of their best hitters Cosmer hitting for more power Missed 30 games a year ago with a broken hand. This season with seven home runs. That'll bring the tying run to the plate as Kane will take third. I'm becoming such a big fan of going first to third. I just think there's something exciting about pressing the point a bit. There's a hit to left field, but he's not going to just stay at second base. Lorenzo Kane is going to force the issue a little bit by going to third. And the reason you don't throw to third there is you do not want Hosmer to go to second base to get two runners in scoring position. But I just think it 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 presses it a bit on the offensive side puts a little more pressure on Michael Waka. Now that there's a runner at third base with two outs. You think about the power of Morales nearly homered earlier. Two home runs Friday night. He represents the tying run. He is walked and also flied out to left. And he is their RBI guy. Oh. 
And I'm glad he wasn't looking for that off speed pitch down and in. That's exactly what Carpenter hit down the right field line. Just barely fair. I think he got away with location there. The one one. That pitch was intended for that spot. He wanted to go up the ladder with him. And normally you, you change eye level so you go up the ladder then maybe you follow up with a change up down and away which maybe is about three feet away and at a slower speed to try to just get him to hit the ball on the ground. There's a nasty change up pitch he just spoke of. Well you're changing eye levels and you're changing speeds. It's so good in this spot. Dealing with runners on. He's got runners at first and third. Pitch count at 80 for Michael Walker. Doubled up on the changeup. You, know, you might ask the question, Dan, if, if you and I knew that he was going to throw a changeup following a fastball up, why doesn't Morales know it? And I think the, the point is he did know it. I mean, he's probably very aware of that, but. It's still hard to react to that because it's all about the timing and Waka has him set up for it and you really can't do anything about it if he makes his pitch. Biggest pitch of the game for Waka right here. The 3-2 he walked him. Bases loaded. Second time he's walked Morales. Now these fans get into it. Alex Gordon hitting behind Kendry's Morales. My first thought is the Cardinals were a little too cautious with Kendry's Morales with a four run lead. 4 1 lead. Bases loaded, two outs. Ball one. Gordon has struck out swinging. That was in the second. And reached on an air by Peter Borges. Maybe a different hitter up next, Dan. I don't mind being cautious with a guy that can hurt you like Morales, but Gordon can hurt you too. The 1 0. The 2 0. In the air. Shallow right. And the catch is made by Gritchick. Kansas City strands the bases loaded.
the Cardinals hit a home run. The Gateway Honda dealers will donate $1,000 to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Let's take a look at the changeups of our starting pitchers. Both pitchers pitching well here today, but this changeup caused Ventura some problems. He left it over the inside part of the plate, and Matt Carpenter took it deep down the line. There's the grip of Waka. Same thing. Get kind of the three-finger approach, but this pitch goes down and away from the left-handed hitter, Morales, and that's the difference. That's what you try to do with the changeup. Get it to move down and away. When it's straight on the inner half, bad things happen. Here's Rando Gritchick. That tails back in for his strike. I think Michael Walk is feeling pretty fortunate right now that he got through that inning. Getting down 2-0 and on Alex Gordon, who maybe got a little jumpy on that last swing. Hitters count. Just a little bit over-anxious. And flew out to right. But that was certainly a dangerous situation in this game. And I think Waka's fortunate to be out of that. I thought you made a great point. You know, you may not be pitching around Morales, but you're so careful with him with a three-run lead. Then you load him up. And it's almost as if, as you said, you pitch defensively with the bases loaded. Yeah, it's, not, it's something that sometimes drives me nuts when pitchers will do that late in games. You're, you're, you're kind of going along with everything's working, and all of a sudden you're going to back off the throttle. And sometimes you're being told to do that. Sometimes that's just the team philosophy. Well, we don't want this guy to beat us late. Well, all of a sudden you're saying, well, stop pitching. Stop being aggressive. And I, I just think it hurts, hurts a pitcher. He's better off being in that offensive mode. One out. Here's Mike Reynolds. They're just joining us. It was Matt Holiday, a late scratch from the lineup. And Reynolds now has taken over in left field. He struck out swinging in the second. And he also grounded out two second. The fastball taken low. 97. Still throwing hard, this young right hander. Pitch count nearing 100. Great phrase that pitchers always like to kind of joke about is when you get this kind of advice. And people won't say it directly this way, but but it sounds this way. It's it's don't walk him, but don't give him anything to hit. It's don't like, walk well, him, wait don't a minute. give in, right? Wait a minute. <laughs> Which one do you Which want? Two, exactly. See, the guy that says that really is covering himself. Uh, of course. Of course. A lot of times that happens with first base open, and you would get that advice from a pitching coach in the minor league. They might say, or somewhere along the line, they'd say, well, okay, don't, we're not going to walk him here, but we don't want you to give up any hit either. So, again, tell me, what, what, what are you really saying here? You want me to get him out? Of course, that's what I'm trying to do. It's what you've been trying to do since pitch one of this game. You must have loved it when the pitching coach or somebody came out or a fan yelled, throw strikes, Horton. Well, what do you think I'm trying to do here? That's that's the plan. Well, I told you George Kissel would find infielders in the minor leagues if they ever told their pitcher on their own team to throw strikes. And he'd have, he'd have a meeting with them, and he'd say, look, what do you think they're trying to do? <laughs> and that that's that's almost a negative. I mean, don't you, – you, you, you think you're trying to encourage your pitcher, but all you're doing is making him – a little more stressed and the idea is to be behind him and George would say do you want somebody to come up and stand right behind your ear while you're hitting and tell you hey make contact <laughs> Luke Hochaver is throwing in the Royals pen in on the hands of Reynolds as he fouled it back 97 and when you're watching Ventura throw, it just seems to be free oh, and easy. It's it's an e it is an easy 97. It loads out of his hand. It's a smooth 97, no doubt about it. Not a very complicated delivery. Just turns, doesn't even go over the head, just throws it. Up the middle and a base hit. Past Infante. Good at bat for Mark Reynolds. And he may have knocked Ventura out of the game with that single. We'll see. Players to watch the highest winning percentage in the National League this season. Walker is through six. James Shields, the former Royal, Zach Greinke, and our old buddy Shelby Miller. He's five and one. DraftKings.com. Enter promo code Cards.
You just wonder how short the bench is for Mike Matheny's club. Is Holiday available to pinch hit? You have Tony Cruz and you have Jason Hayward dealing with a hip issue. Well, it kind of helps that you're playing an American League game with the designated hitter. You don't have to think about pinch hitting and, and all that, but really not a lot of defensive change possibilities. If, if Holiday's out and Hayward's out, that means it's just Tony Cruz. The Royals are only 0 for 4 pinch hitting this season to show you how little you use your bench in an American League game. 0 for 4. I mean, it's just basically here's the eight guys go out and play. Double switch, non existent. You know, Ned Yost has basically used the same lineup every day. Well, he also doesn't have a defensive liability out there either that he's got to worry right. about late in the game. That's part of it. No balls at two strikes on Borges, who is grounded to second, also grounded out to third. At one point, Ventura with 14 straight, he sat down. Started the game with back to back walks, then a single and a double. Borges pops it up. Two down. Tuesday night, Cardinals and Diamondbacks, 25,000 fans received the Cardinals Tradition Meets Today poster. And the poster features current players and a few Cardinal greats along the way. It's courtesy of Shelter Insurance. The rare Ray Lankford. And that's not uh, that's not Ray Lankford's number. He was 16. My my guess is that guy's name is Joe Lankford and just picked whatever number he wanted. I thought it was Bob. I think it's Joe. Two outs. You get Pat Paris on that. Strike one on Cosmo. I maintain Ray Lankford, one of the most underrated producers offensively. For the Cardinals in the last 40 to 50 years. It's the guy we don't talk about a lot, but he was a really good hitter. And had some terrific seasons. Sure did. A couple of different stints with the club, too. Here's a no one pitch. Pulled foul, nothing at two. Cosma has struck out and also fly to right. No activity in the Cardinals pen. It'll be seven, eight, and nine in the order for the Royals coming up. Lights are on here at the ballpark. Cloudy skies. Rain off and on. One ball, two strikes. Two outs. Reynolds, the runner at first base. The tour is coming off of seven shutout innings against the Cincinnati Reds, where he only threw 88 pitches. Had the bad start here in the first inning. First four Cardinals reached base, but he has been very, very good since then, other than the changeup to Carpenter. In the air. Out to left, there's Gordon. And he makes the play. It's time to stretch. Waka back to work. 4 1, St. Louis.
That blast by Matt Carpenter made it four to one St. Louis and that's our score. And as we roll into the bottom of the seventh. Michael Waka still in this game as we take a look at the Mazda game summary. Waka pitching into the seventh. Carpenter one for two. His eighth home run. Then Ventura and Perez. You see what they've done this afternoon. Five hits aside and a 4-1 St. Louis lead. Walk has been very sharp, really, for the most part, has kept the ball out of the middle of the plate. He did get into some trouble there in the sixth inning, but the Cardinal pitching all season long has done a great job of pitching in stress situations. The opponent's batting average, the way they've stranded runners when there are a couple of guys in scoring position has really been a plus for Mike Matheny's team and really part of the reason why they've started out so well, 11 games over 500, and trying to avoid a sweep here this afternoon. So two of the best catchers right there. And for the most part, very durable. Now last year, Molina had the hand issue. The Cardinals have Choke getting loose in the pen, a right-hander as well. But Salvador Perez started more games, caught more innings than any other major league catcher last year. 143 starts. He is bounced into a double play and also single. Well, Perez has great admiration for Yadier Molina, but there's an awful lot of people have a lot of admiration for Perez right now as a player. A breaking ball drops in for a strike one and two. It's Seth Manus, the right-hander getting loose. Randy Choate. He's up and ready to roll. Back to Michael Walkup. And the first out here in the home half of the seventh. Made the point about the bullpen. It should be rested. And it seems like for the better part of two weeks, we've been talking about the starters going deep into games, giving the bullpen a chance to rest up, not be overexposed. And now about a turn and a half to the rotation. The Cardinals have done that. Well, I think a key part of being able to get to this point now was was Lance Lynn Lackey having good long start then Waka had one in New York but but even thinking about fly ball to left off the bat of Infante backing up to make the catch Mark Reynolds and thinking about what Lance Lynn was able to do in game one of this series and you know we kind of talked about boy it looks like he's got something going on with his back and that really was the issue he had some cramps while he was warming up in the bullpen and we could tell he was kind of standing up at his delivery didn't look right but yet he kind of gutted through. Now he didn't pitch very well in that game, but what he did do is give the Cardinals enough innings in game one so you didn't come back to that same problem of having a depleted bullpen. Lynn was able to go six innings. He gave up 10 hits, five runs, a couple of home runs in that game, but I give him credit for pitching when he wasn't feeling right and the Cardinals recognizing it, but kind of gutted through it. Owen won the count on Orlando. Chopped left side, tough play in the short hop. Cosma nicely done the pick by Adams. Not an easy play at all for Pete Cosma. We head to the eighth.
So let's go to our studio. Jim A. standing by with a Bomberito Sports Update. Luke Ochaver, former top pick, now working out of the pen for Kansas City. Our Chevy call to the pen, his sixth appearance of the year. Really struggled as a starter for many years for Kansas City. Just had trouble getting deep in the games. Had an ERA over five as a starter and lost a lot of ball games. Then he went to the bullpen in 2013, and he was lights out. Missed last year all season. Missed a lot of the fun, unfortunately, for his Royals teammates when they played so well a year ago. What does he throw, you ask? Our Hyundai pitch arsenal. Fastball cutter, the knuckle curve, and his sinker. 2006, he was selected first overall by Kansas City. There's the knuckle curve. He had a crazy road to get to the big leagues. Originally drafted by the Dodgers. Did not sign. Pitched at the University of Tennessee. As Wong yanks that foul. Dodgers then selected him 40th overall. And he was switching agents. Didn't sign. And then eventually, after talks didn't produce a contract, he went to independent ball. Back in the draft. And selected by Kansas City. Infante makes the play. One away. Giordano Ventura, seven innings, seven strikeouts, five hits, and four runs allowed. Key moment in this game. Two run homer by Matt Carpenter back at the sixth. Bad changeup from Ventura. Good hitting by Carpenter. Barely kept that ball fair. Home run number eight on the season for Matt and really kind of changed this game back in the Cardinals way. After that good start for St. Louis in the first inning when they got those two early runs, Ventura was just mowing down the Cardinals. I mean, he was making it look easy. That home run kind of changed the tone of it. Carpenter also walked and scored back in the first, was called out on strikes in the third. 0-1 pitch. One ball and one strike. Matt has now scored 31 runs to lead the club. Become such a complete player. He's, a, you know, he's a good defender. I wouldn't say he's a great defender. He's not kind of the first guy you think of when you think of Gold Glove third baseman. But he makes the plays, throws well, comes in on balls well. But at the plate, he does everything well. The runs you talked about, he drives in runs. Fly ball into center. Kane backing up a few steps to make the catch. And there's two down. Yeah, with those 31 runs, he's now fourth overall in the National League in runs scored. The league leader is Bryce Harper at 38. Then Paul Goldschmidt will see him tomorrow. Dexter Fowler with 32 of the Cubs, and then Matt Carpenter at 31. Two outs, and here's Johnny Peralta. Dark skies overhead here at Kauffman Stadium. The Cardinals shortstop, he takes some cuts, doesn't he? Sure does. Oh, one pitch. Ground ball, left side. And under the glove of Escobar and a base hit into left. So a two-out hit for Peralta, and that extends the inning to Adams. 
really what big league hitters are able to do. You can look bad on one pitch and come back and find a hole with the next one. And Johnny Peralta, I mean, he may not wow you with the way he plays, but he's a very steady player. Found a pitch he could handle and took it past Escobar. Adams with a double to center and an RBI. He also grounded into the shift and struck out in the sixth. And so again, strike one, Moustakis moving from third base to the right side of the second base bag. find that interesting Dan that that there are coaches that handle the shifts in baseball that actually have tendencies that will say the guy will bunt against the shift with one strike but not two that that's how defined it gets in this game. One one pitch. I guess the question would be is it too much. Well. It depends on, on on your ability to handle it as in any information. I mean you could put too much too many things in your head and then you're unproductive. We, we all get that cramming for a test. Wait a minute. What am I doing now. I mean but if you can handle it. The 2 1 in the gap in left center. Peralta on his way to third and they'll hold him up two doubles this afternoon for Matt Adams. No one is at the plate. That ball got away. And now time is called. Well, Matt Adams has always said he could hit the ball the other way. And I know they shift on me, but boy, thinking about defining him as a hitter, he believes he uses gap to gap. Left center field gap to the right center field gap. And he plugs it there. Peralta. He's running hard, but the outfield defense for the Royals running a little faster, getting to that ball, getting it in quickly. Errant throw, but no chance for him to score. Big gap in left center for Yadier Molina. Runners at second and third. First pitch popped up. Is it playable? Hosmer over, leans in and out of room. Tough day for Yachty at the plate. He's grounded out with a runner at second base. He is struck out and popped out to Salvador Perez in foul territory. Five for 16 in this spot. It's good play by Kane to get the ball back in quickly. You could see Okendo wanting to send Peralta. Sure, a long way to go for Kane, too. He was playing him in right center and Speed just so important in this game in so many ways. The 1 1 pitch to Yadier Molina. Say a tough game for Yadi at the plate. He's looked a little almost uncomfortable at the plate. All afternoon, like his balance has been bad. You noticed really from pitch one, he just seemed to be kind of trying to figure it out. Kind of his stance just didn't just didn't seem comfortable in the batter's box. But he's had a good road trip. He was hitting over 300 for the road trip coming into this game today, and the average has been steady this year, right around 300. One ball and two strikes. Molina hits it down the right field line and foul. You know what's funny too is the minute you say something like that about Molina, a little off balance, right. not quite right. right, he'll serve it into right and pick up a couple of base hits and maybe seal a victory. Yeah, I don't think Yachty's trying to literally set you up, but <laughs> but it can feel like that. Sure does. There are players that would do that. Look bad on a ball in the dirt. 
Then throw me another curveball and he smoke at 400 feet. Here's a one two. Molina the fly ball into shallow left. Almost a barehanded catch by Escobar. Instead, two runs score, and it's now six to one. If he made that play, my goodness, what an effort from Alcides Escobar. That was unbelievable. I'm amazed that he almost made the play. By the time he got to that ball, I think he felt the only thing he could do was barehanded. And you could tell it was trouble off the bat of Yachty because it was not going to be caught by Gordon. He could not get to that baseball. You could tell. But with Escobar, you weren't sure. And he is so spectacular at shortstop. Shades of Kevin Mitchell. Oh, my. So he's going back and he's looking over his shoulders and he's realizing, you know, I can't get my glove up there quickly enough. So I'm going to stick my bare hand out. You could see he wanted to backhand it with the glove, and it wouldn't reach all the way. It was behind him more than he thought. He ran to the spot where he thought it would be. And you'd, you'd almost have to see that live to see how far he went in a short period of time just to get to that baseball. So a base hit for Yadier Molina. RBI 17 and 18, and it's now a 6-1 St. Louis lead. Randall Grichik at the plate. I believe if I was a pitcher for the Kansas City Royals when Escobar came into the dugout, my guess is they'll do it. Every pitcher will go up and say thanks for the effort. I mean, you, you want to appreciate that kind of effort by your defense behind you, even if it doesn't produce results. Hanging breaking ball and a single to left for Randall Grichik. Coach Haver came in. He got the first two, then a base hit. By Peralta to left. Adams the double in the gap in left center. Little blue pit for Molina. And now a single by Grichik. Four in a row. Hanging curveball there. Inner half. Grichik's first hit. That was Molina's first hit. Runners at first and second for Mark Reynolds. The pitch in the dirt. Franklin Morales, a lefty, getting loose in the pen for Kansas City. One ball and one strike on Mark Reynolds. Reynolds has struck out swinging, grounded out to second base, and a single in the seventh. He's one for 15 against Hochaver. He got away with that. Popped up behind home plate. And it's one and two. We've seen Hochaver hang a couple of breaking balls in this inning. Yeah. The knuckle curve doesn't seem very sharp. He threw one good one early on, but, but it's kind of just floating up there. Here's a one two. Been watching Perez and how he receives the ball. He has a lot of mannerisms like Yadier Molina. Just the soft, quiet hands. The 2-2. Two -two. I find it interesting that he that he loves Yadi so much as a as a player, and he's he's just learned to try to appreciate him and be like him, but but they're not from the same country. No. I mean, he's from Venezuela. Yanni's from Puerto Rico. And what we find is often even with, you know, you, you have a big hit uh, as Cabrera did, and, and he's thinking about Venezuelans that are in his country's past, like uh, Galarraga, because, of course, they care about players who are stars in their own country. But in this case, Perez has really latched on to Molina, and Trying to emulate him in some ways. And it's fun to watch. This is bad. Reynolds has seen a couple of breaking balls that have not been sharp. Right. You wonder if he just eliminates that. 
If he gets a fastball, would he jump on it? Definitely have to look fastball. 2-2. Two -two. Chase the pitch, mowing away, and a strikeout of Reynolds. But the Cardinals pick up two. 6-1, St. Louis. Folds of Honor and its mission of providing educational scholarships to families of military members who have been killed or disabled while serving our country. For more information, visit FoxSportsSupports.com. Left-hander Kevin Segrist after seven strong innings from Michael Walkup. And he'll get the top of the lineup. Alcides Escobar, Mike Moustakis, and Lorenzo Kane. He's our Chevy call to the pen, Kevin Segrist. He's had a busy year, 20 appearances already. Our Chevy called with the bullpen, the ERA under one, and Waka getting the, the high fives and the congratulations. And there's his line. Escobar has singled to center field. Rounded out to short and fly to center. Remember the run that Waka gave up it was unearned, so his ERA drops to 1.87 now on the year and a chance to go to 7 0. Here's a 1 1 pitch. Segrist hasn't pitched in five days, Dan, and all of a sudden the bullpen, as we mentioned, has gotten enough rest to where you really want some work for Sigrist. Rosenthal would be the same. He hasn't pitched in five days. Haven't seen Belial in five days. So much better trend lately for St. Louis. Here's a one two. Strikeout for Kevin Sigrist and that looked to be the changeup. It was turned it over. Pitch he's really working on and it's getting more and more effective as he starts to throw it more. It also becomes more effective because his velocity is getting back to where it was two years ago. He's been hitting now consistently 95, 96 on the gun. Spring training, he was around 91, 92. Here's Mike Moustakis. Something in his delivery, too, where I can just see that yeah. he sells the sells the the changeup better. The fastball, you could see how powerful that is, and he does seem to be back to his normal. But, but he sells the changeup well. Curveball still a kind of a work in progress. Fly ball lifted to center. Peter Borges. Two outs. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the St. Louis Cardinals. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent 
of the St. Louis Cardinals. Along with Pat Parrish and Rick Horton, I'm Dan McLaughlin. Jim Hayes, Alberbosky, they're standing by at Ballpark Village. They'll have the postgame show for you. And here is Lorenzo Kane, who is twice fly to center and single to center. Joe Blanton and Holland, the closer, getting loose of the pen for Kansas City. So you're throwing 96 miles an hour, but you've gotten two outs with off-speed pitches. I like it. 0-1 pitch. A high fly ball. Shallow right center. Peter Borges under it and puts it away. Good work by Segrist. All right, Jim, thanks. 6 1, our scores. We move to the ninth. Drew Butera takes over behind the plate. Joe Blant will take over on the mound. And this is our Chevy call to the pen. Blanton's been around for a while, not really an overpowering guy. And again, part of a bullpen that we just think is one of the best in baseball. Butera giving Perez a rest late in this game. Been all Cardinals so far. Borges is hitless. Two ground outs and a pop out. Cardinals return home tomorrow. Again, note the uh, start time on the pregame show at 2 tomorrow. Arizona in town for 3. Off day on Thursday. Then the Dodgers will be in town. We'll see Los Angeles for the first time this year. They're in for 3. And then three with Milwaukee. That's pulled foul. Part of the pregame tomorrow, we have a feature. It's about 12 minutes long. It's called A Soldier's Story. And it's on Stephen Reich. And this is a feature that you do not want to miss. What a play. How good is Escobar? Seriously. Man. So smooth. 
has a good arm but has terrific hands almost made that great play an inning ago and this board just he knows runs well so I don't have much time so I'm going to spin and throw all at the same time right on the money. It steps Pete Cosma. He is struck out fly to right and also flied out to left. A soldier's story and again. An hour long pregame show tomorrow beginning at 2 3 15 with the first pitch as we celebrate Memorial Day at Bush Stadium. Also see an extended interview with Mitch Harris. One ball one strike on Cosma. Trevor Rosenthal grew up in the area, staying at his parents' home, and he'll come in and pitch the bottom of the ninth in a non save situation. We haven't seen him for a while. Five days off that we mentioned for Rosenthal, matching the five days that Segrist had off. Joe Bland, a 34 year old from Nashville, Tennessee. The strikeout of Cosmo. Celebrate the kickoff to summer weekend by watching the Cardinals take on the Dodgers next Friday and by sprucing up your yard. Friday, May 29th, 25,000 fans, 16 and older, take home a Whitey Herzog Garden home. And you can get your tickets at cardinals.com slash promotions. Joe Blanton hit a home run you may recall in the 2008 World Series while pitching with the Phillies. Only pitcher in the history of the game to do that. And to have never hit a single. Another extra base hit in his career. Saved it for the right stage. Did he ever? He had some good years when he was with Oakland early in his career. 16 game winner in 06, 14 the following year, and then Oakland traded him to Philadelphia midway through that 2008 season. Never really thought of him as an overpowering guy. He did throw 191 there past Pete Cosma, but he's not going to throw much harder than that. Cardinals have struck out nine times in this game, but they've out hit the Royals 9 5. Ventura, Hochaver, and now Blanton. Blanton had a season where he threw 230 innings with Oakland and only walked 40 batters. That's what keeps you around the game. One and two the count on Colton Wong. And a ground ball that's pulled foul. Kentucky Wildcat. He was all SEC a couple of years while pitching in college at Kentucky. Then was the 24th overall pick. In 2002. Hit out of play. One ball and two strikes. Mike Matheny has to be happy with what he's seen from his club today. A bounce back game so far. There's still three more outs to get. But this is a tough Royals club. Ned Yost has these guys playing, believing in themselves. 14 games over 500 coming into this game. They'd won five straight, eight out of ten. And, and this is a team that's. I don't think they're going anywhere. They're just too good. Too many facets of the game. Bullpen. Defense. Offense. 
And the crowds are back too. 36,342 here this afternoon. 36342. Here's a one-two pitch. Wong hits a high fly ball out to deep center field. Kane looks up and it's off the wall. Great at bat there by Colton Wong. A two-out double and extends this inning to Matt Carpenter. Colton Wong grinded through an at-bat in game one of this series in the ninth inning and worked a walk. And we talked about how good hitters do that. They do not give away any at bats even late in the game and he grinds through this change up grip down in the middle of the plate and he gave it a ride. Love that at bat in game one and the ninth pitch of this at bat. Love this one as well. And here is Carpenter. Matt walked and scored in the first called out on strikes. Back in the third, two-run homer off Jordano Ventura. That was in the sixth, and he also flied out to center. Here's a 1-0 pitch. Think about this: from 1986 through 2013, the Royals averaged finishing out of their division by 20 games. That is some bad baseball for a long time. Now you can understand why these fans are so excited. The great run that they had a year ago. You can make a case that the two central divisions are the two toughest divisions in the game before it's all said and done. I would definitely say that about the American League. Yeah, I think the National League West is going to be interesting before it's over. Well, I, I can say the East, too. Nationals are a terrific team, but the Dodgers, you know, the Giants, you, you always want to count them out and say, well, maybe this isn't going to be this year, and then they just figure out a way to win. And I'm interested in seeing the San Diego Padres play. Now, they're, they're going to have trouble at the bottom of that division in the National League West, but the top of that division's pretty solid. Three and two. The Cubs are better than they were a year ago, much better. Pittsburgh will be in it, I would think, before it's all said and done. 20 and 22 at the start of play today. Time will tell. Reds, by the way, have lost seven straight. Milwaukee to 16 wins this year. Here's a 3 2. Spoiled by Carpenter. Three two pitch. Carpenter grinding through in a bat late. Draws his second walk on base for the third time. First walk issued by Joe Blanton. Extends the inning to Johnny Peralta, who's two for four today with an RBI. Blanton approaching the 30 pitch mark here in the top of the ninth. 1 0 pitch. Good cut by Peralta. Fouled it back. So Rosenthal just continues to play catch out in the bullpen. He's loose and ready to go. Very important for him to get some work here today. What you hope is efficient. short and efficient, yeah. thinking the same thing. I mean, that's the nightmare for any manager. You get your closer up. You think he needs a little work. You don't have an off day for three days coming up. You'd love to see him pitch at home. And two out of the three coming up, at least. 
He comes in and has a 30 pitch inning. That's not what you're looking for. The 2 1 pitch to Peralta. And if he happens to be struggling, which Rosenthal doesn't very often, but if you have, have one of those just clunker days where you're just not right, then you have the worst problem having to have somebody go in and help him, which is not the kind of the mindset you want to build with your closer. But regardless, it's still nice, a nice problem to have for Mike Matheny that he's got to get work for his closer because the starters have been so good the last week or so. The 2-2. Two -two. And a strikeout of Peralta. He can't believe it. The Cardinals collectively have struck out 10 times. 6 1 St. Louis. Rosenthal coming on. Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by Budweiser. Still brewed the hard way. This Bud's for you. A statue of one of the all-time greats, George Brett. He was here for game one. As Trevor Rosenthal takes over for St. Louis. Cardinals drafted Trevor in 2009. He's part of our Chevy call to the pen out of Cowley County Community College in Kansas. And at that point in time, he was primarily a shortstop. 24 year old from Lee's Summit, Missouri. It'll be Hosmer, Morales, and Gordon. Braden Looper's uncle was scouting this area. And recommended to the Cardinals, you need to take this guy. And as the story goes, Trevor was playing shortstop, came into a game. And Trevor was telling me just the other day, he was hitting 96 on the gun. And no one knew he was throwing this hard. They knew he could throw hard, but there was one scout there. Had a gun on him. The scout was there to see somebody else, as you've heard that probably so many times about various players. But... Trevor went on the mound. Hits 96. And all of a sudden, the next game, there were 10 or 11, 12 scouts at the game ready for him to pitch. Following year, he was strictly a pitcher and done with his days at shortstop. Reynolds near the line, one away. Let's turn to our Budweiser player of the game, and it's Michael Waka, seven innings, five hits. No earned runs. Walk two and struck out four. Very efficient, too. Just 92 pitches for Waka, really in control and in command the entire game. He did get into that situation in the sixth inning, was able to get out Alex Gordon with the bases loaded. That was a key moment for him, but really just a perfect outing for a guy you want to kind of stop the negative momentum. The Cardinals having lost three straight, Waka gave him a lift. Morales has been on base twice, two walks, and he's also flied out to left.
Rosenthal would become the first National League pitcher. Excuse me, Walker would become the first National League pitcher to go to seven wins this year. Felix Hernandez has seven wins for Seattle. Back to back changeups missed inside, and it's two balls and one strike. Rosenthal would become the first National League reliever to get to 14 saves. He's tied with Storin of Washington, Amelia of New York. And hopefully that save number 14 would come against Arizona tomorrow. This, of course, being a non-save situation. The 6-1 lead. I thought the key at bat in this game, Rick, was Alex Gordon. Yep. Bases loaded back in the six against Michael Walker. Yeah, that was it. And Walker came up with the pitch. He was kind of on his heels a little bit, but came up with the pitch. And Gordon may be a little over-anxious on that 2-0 pitch. And... Really, things have turned since then. One ball and one strike with two outs. Up the middle and a base hit. Bad location, but well struck by Gordon, who's hit the Cardinals well over the years of interleague play. Butera gets an at bat. As you know, it's interesting with Rosenthal. He's half between getting his work, working on some things, and also trying to get big league outs. I mean, you can't forget that last thing. Drew Butera. On the bench is Dyson, a speedy player for Kansas City, and also Christian Colon, who's a top pick out of Cal State Fullerton a few years ago. Could play the middle infield. And this young man, Butera. Two balls and a strike. Two and two the count. Two two swung on and missed and the Cardinals salvage a game in this series six one the final Michael Walker. What a story he's turning into 7 and 0 here in 2015 notice more Cardinal fans here at the ballpark for the final game of this series than we had the first two and they're certainly happy with the result today. Nice win for the Cardinals. They did everything right. Waka got it started. Rosenthal finished it along with help from Segrist and the Cardinals got the hits when they needed a Matt Carpenter's home run the biggest blow of all. Carpenter on base three times, and here's that home run. Two run shot in the sixth. Missouri lottery, Cardinals live. Jim and L standing by. <laughs>